we are so glad that you have come to join us at our service today. Thank you, one and all. Um, let's just open this in prayer. Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask that you be with us today. Lord, we ask that you anoint the singers, that you anoint the speaker. In your name, Jesus, that you just go into each and every home. Lord, let us feel your presence, Jesus. Permeate the air, Jesus. Send your angels of ministry. In your name, Lord, we ask, Jesus, that as they worship, Lord, that you heal their bodies, that you fill them with the Holy Ghost, Jesus, that you just surround them with your presence. In your name, Jesus. Amen. At this time, we're going to have Sister April come, uh, April Kerr, and she is going to bless us with some songs. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Let's just praise the Lord as, as we come together, Lord. I'm so glad that you have provided this chance. Just help reach out to God as we do this. Wherever you are, wherever you're sitting or standing, let's just praise him from our hearts. He'll hear us. Praise you, Jesus. Praise 
Let's sing praises. Let's sing praises to our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we love you. Sing praise to our God. Let's sing praise to our God. Lift him higher in one accord. Let's sing praises to our God. For he alone is.
point in time, communion was cut between God and man. No longer did he walk in the cool of the evening with them in the garden. They were kicked out. There was an angel with a flaming sword put at the gate of the garden. They now have to earn their living. They have to weed and they have to hoe and they have to plant and they have to work with the sweat of their brow to now have food to eat. And that communion was cut off. But you see, God longed in his heart to have communion with mankind. And so he created a plan. But down through the ages, he always had a, a, a prophet here and a prophet there which he would speak to and they would speak to the people but the common people could not go before the throne of God the common people could not go and have communion with God Right. but he decided to make a plan for us if we can look at Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 through 7 it says for unto us a child is born Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. And look at this next one. The Mighty God, yeah. the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So God in his great wisdom, he prophesied, he, he let Isaiah prophesy it hundreds of years before it ever came to pass. That there was going to be a child that was going to be born. And he was going to be the almighty God. He was going to be the counselor, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And he was again going to bring us into communication with almighty God. Mm -hmm. Matthew 1, chapter 20 through 23. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph. Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So here we see the prophecy of Isaiah coming to pass. There was a son that was born and they were to call his name Jesus because he was going to be Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. And he was going to save his people from their sins. He was going to bring us into communion once again. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven among, given among men whereby we must be saved. What was that name? It was Jesus. Yes. It was Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. No other name given among us whereby we must be saved. Amen. Turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, no argument, no argument under the sun. Great is the mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. What is the mystery? Of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. What does manifest mean? It means robed. So let's read it again. God was robed in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached until the Gentiles believed on the world, on in the world, and then received up into glory. Who was this? It was Jesus. Yes. It was Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. It was in the as in Isaiah, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. That was Jesus. He was robed in the flesh, and he came to save his people from their sins. Yes, right. Let's turn to John 1, 1 through 14. We're going to see another side of this Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was 
with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. John was sent to bear witness. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. Right. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. What was his name? What was the name of of the person that was robed in the flesh. That God was robed in the flesh. It was Jesus. Yeah, yes. Jesus is his name. Yes. Which was born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. Yes. And the world was made flesh. The word was made flesh. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. Jesus Christ was God, robed in flesh, come to bring communion back to himself, yes. back to God. You see, he, he longs to have communion with you. He longs to be able to talk to you in the quiet of the morning. He longs for you to worship him and get caught up in his presence. He longs for you. That is true love. When we worship him because we want to, not because we are made to. John 4, 13, 14. We see Jesus at the well talking to the Samaritan woman. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. What water is he talking about? If you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. Well, if you turn to John chapter 7, verses 37 and 39. We're going to learn what that water is. The living water. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they believe on him, should receive. If you believe on him, you should receive the Spirit. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus hadn't been crucified yet. He hadn't gone to the cross yet. So therefore, we couldn't receive it. But this water that we are supposed to receive is the Holy Ghost. Yes. It's the Holy Ghost. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you come into communion with him and you never thirst again. Right. John 3, 1 through 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. He was a religious leader of his time. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Look at me. 
You know, I'm old. How can I be born again? Can he enter the second time into his blind mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless he is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto ye, ye must be born again. You've got to be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Acts verses 1, 4 through 5, and then 8 through 15. And being assembled together with them, commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. We see that Jesus is given the last great commission on the mount. He's talking to them before he's taken up. And he tells them to go tarry in Jerusalem. For there's going to be power that comes down from on high. The Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. So. And when he had spoken these things, which while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking into the heavens? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where there abode. Now listen to who was there. Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotus, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yeah. And with his brother, and with his brothers, they were all in the upper room. I have heard it said that only the apostles received the Holy Ghost. That's not true. Mary, his mother, was there, and his brothers were there, and all the apostles. And if you read one scripture further, and in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together was about a hundred and twenty. There was a hundred and twenty people tearing in that upper room. They don't, it doesn't say how long they tarried, but they tarried and they prayed and they waited for the power to come that was from on high. They waited for that living water to be dispersed. The living water where they would never thirst again. Yes, amen. Acts 2, 1 through 7. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Who was? The 120. They didn't leave. They stayed there. They stayed there in terror. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them flowing tongues like a, as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy 
presence. And the love that they feel when they're caught up in his presence is like no other. Because the love of God is filling the room and filling their hearts and filling their Acts 4, 31 through 33. Jesus. Oh, wait. No, we got to keep going. Back up, Brother uh, William, if you can. And there were swelling hedges and Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Why? Because they were called there to pay their taxes. Now, with this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, oh, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They're, un they're uneducated. How do they know our language? Keep going. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. So... And they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Oh, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Thank you, Jesus. The next set of scripture, Acts 2, 36 through 42. And they said, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter stood up, and he told them, You crucified your Christ. You crucified him. And they were pricked. And they said, what shall we do? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Ask God to forgive you. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I know even if you've lived a good life, you need to repent. Because the Bible said we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, forgive me for anything I've done that's against you. Forgive me, Lord, for anything I've done that may be against you that I know of and that I don't. Please forgive me, Jesus. I give you my life. And he baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Jesus Christ, no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. That's the name you're baptized in. That's the name that has power. You call on Jesus and you're going to feel instant power. And that's what you're baptized in. That is the only name authorized to remit your sins. And you're baptized for the remission or washing away of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive that living water wherewith you will never thirst again. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I was refilled with the Holy Ghost when I was six. My children were filled with the Holy Ghost when they were six. I've got cousins who were filled with the Holy Ghost at three or four. I've seen people on their deathbed receive the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter what age, what age or what part of walking life you are. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can receive that living water where with you will never thirst again. You can come back into communion with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Great. Thank you, Lord. And if you read further, if you go down to verse 40, and with many other words did they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto 3,000 souls. So now we see there was 120 people in the upper room. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brother were part of it. And then after they got done preaching, 3,000 souls were added. I submit to you, it's just not, was not for the apostles. It wasn't just for the apostles, but it's as many as the Lord our God shall call. You can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can come back into communion with Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Acts 4.31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said of them on of the great things that he possessed was his own. That's another situation in Acts where they received the Holy Ghost. That wasn't the day of Pentecost. If you go down to Acts 9. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard the Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John who were then came and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was not fallen upon any of them. Only they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when they laid hands on them they received the Holy Ghost. They received the Holy Ghost. That's the Samaritans. That's another instant years later where people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 10. And when Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man hold forbid water that they should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as we? Here we see the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. A whole room full. Acts 19, 1 through 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Esau. Ephesus of finding certain disciples. These people were already serving God. They were disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, On which were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, <clears throat> saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. Here is another instance where people who were disciples, who were already serving God, found out that they needed to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in the name of the Lord. Romans 8, 9 says, Be ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. What is that spirit that dwells in you? That is the gift of the Holy Ghost, that living water. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You mean if I don't have the Holy Ghost, I'm none of his? That's what the scripture says. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is is life because of righteousness. But if that spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. What was the spirit that dwelt in Jesus Christ? He was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. His mother was Mary of flesh, but his father was the Holy Ghost. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. As he walked on this earth, he hungered as a man, his mother's son. But on the spiritual side, which was his father, he healed the sick and said, Thy sins be forgiven you. Rise up and take up your bed. Lazarus, come forth. That spirit that was in him, if it dwells in your mortal body, then your mortal body is going to be quickened. By his spirit that dwells in you. Amen. I'm getting ready to close. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. Mm. Keep going, Brother Will. Romans 8, 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. First Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord some people call this the 
rapture. It's not called the rapture in the Bible. It's called being caught up to meet him. And the spirit, the scripture right before that said, if that spirit that dwelled in Christ dwells in your mortal body, then you shall be changed and caught up. Yes. But if it's not, you're going to be here. He died so we could have this Holy Ghost. He died. If you remember in Matthew, he said, it was the Holy Ghost which was not yet given because Jesus was not left glorified. He had to die and go up to heaven and be glorified for us to receive it. I submit to you today, you need the Holy Ghost. And I know you can't run to the altar here because we are under quarantine and we can't go. But you can receive the Holy Ghost in your home. You can receive it right where you are as we pray. All you have to do is get down and repent. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. And then raise your hands and just start worshiping him. And as you cry and you weep and your mouth starts feeling like it's full of marbles, you just keep talking. And before long, you're going to be speaking in a heavenly language. And the love that you feel that comes over you is God coming into your heart. And you will know you received the Holy Ghost. My dear departed stepfather used to say, when you buy a pair of shoes, the tongues come with it. And when you get the Holy Ghost, the tongues come with it. If you haven't spoken in a heavenly language, you do not have that living water. You do not have that spirit that's going to quicken you when Jesus comes in the clouds. And he's coming soon. We're living in the last days. We're living in the very brink of the last days. We're living in the time that Jesus Christ is going to come back. You can get the Holy Ghost in your living room. Just worship. Just praise and as the tears fall. And as you praise in him, you don't have to beg him. Just praise him and as, he pray, as you praise him. He's going to come into your living room. You're going to speak in other tongues and you're going to get caught up. And you're going to receive that living water where you will never thirst again. And you can be baptized in your home. Somebody can come and baptize you. All they have to do is say, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in Jesus' name. And they can dunk you under the water and you're baptized. They can dunk you under the water in your swimming pool. They can dunk you under the water wherever you are. And your sins will be washed away. You can get into the kingdom of God. You can do this in your own home. I submit to you today. Put on some music. Find some music. The Pentecostals of Alexandria are awesome. The Willowbanks are awesome. Find somebody. Find some songs that's filled with the Spirit. And get down and pray. And worship the Lord. And worship the Lord. Jesus in your name. Lord, as we close today, I ask you, Lord, to send ministering angels into the house. Lord, send ministering angels into where these people are. In your name, come down, Lord, and anoint them. In your name, Jesus, fill them with the Holy Ghost. We worship you, man.
have blessed you today. I hope that you feel the power of God come into your house. We have a web page. If you go to www.main, middle slash, what is that? Underscore. Underscore, no, not the underscore, the other one. Dash. Dash. So www.wilton slash main slash pentecostals.com. It's our website. We're going to be streaming services from there. But there is a page there that says, uh, ask for comments. It, you can put prayer requests there, and we will receive it, and we will pray. And you can also ask questions. And if you ask a question, we will get back to you, and we will answer your question. We love you, and we hope to see you again on Wednesday at 6. God bless you.